a minute, you be really quiet. What's going on, beautiful people? Jesse Moon here today, and I'm hailing to you from Frisco, Texas. I got one of my business partners, Marcus Sorry here, my other business partner, and brother in business, Laquan Butler. Where are you guys hailing to us from? Dallas, Texas. Oh, Mark's internet dropped off. He must have the um yeah, that Obama the internet. <laughs> Device is not connected. There we go. There we go. <laughs> They say you got Frisco, Obama internet. Frisco, Texas, about eight <laughs> degrees right now. Eight degrees. Eight degrees. That's it, guys. Uh, Older here than it is in Antarctica right now. We're just coming to you today because uh, I'll tell you what, man, is things are taking place in the economy, not just the American economy, but the economy. It's a global economy, guys. And uh, 2024 is going to be a year that if you're not prepared for it, if you're not planning for it, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you a lot, guys. Uh, so today's topic is the reason why many get left behind when it comes to financial matters, guys. And the first thing I'll tell you is it all starts with our public school system, guys. Uh, Mark, who, who is the gentleman that said if uh, or, or the gentleman that said he or she that controls your money controls you and the decisions that you make in your life? Was that Warren Buffett? That was Warren Buffett, the fourth Warren wealthiest Buffett. man in the world. So, Laquan, tell yes. everybody, because, because you come from a ministry background from or, or in Connecticut, correct? Yes. In, in Connecticut, ministry background, you, you migrated down to Jacksonville, Florida, got started in the car industry, and now you're in the insurance industry teaching people the rules of the money game. What was one of the big things that had you uh, come into the financial industry to go out there and educate people on how money works and how money grows? What, what was it that stuck with you? It was a uh, code of ethics, especially being in ministry. So... You take the code of ethics from ministry, you take the hustle and grind from the car business, you put that together, you got the mm -hmm. financial industry. So I love, you know, selling cars because one, I don't like being told what to do. And my mindset was, all right, if I'm not, I, I don't like the salary, I don't agree with getting paid hourly. So I chose the car business because if I can move, I get paid off how, many, how much metal I move. But yeah. I like the fact that you have that elderly woman getting on a fixed income and you know she can't afford this car and we had that pandemic where there's a chip shortage and i'm watching and i'm in finance so this person they marked this car for five thousand dollars and she's you know she can't afford it and i don't get paid if i don't sell gap warranty and maintenance it didn't feel right with me so that's crazy i'm looking for a way out so i got introduced into this industry and i found out i can use the same work ethic the same hustle but now teaching financial literacy at no cost to now Ooh. value is exceeding their wallet. And it's the best feeling in the world. That's powerful, brother. Thanks for sharing that. Mark, how, how about you? Ministry background. Uh, you were a marketing director, so marketing advertisement at a, at a corporate office down in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And and you got started in the, in the life insurance industry as well. What, what, what was it that said, you know what, let me let me deal my cards in this industry so I can make an impact? Yeah, never in a thousand years did I ever think I'd be a life insurance agent. Let me just stick that out there right now. I don't I think any of us said that. I didn't yeah. dream about it growing up. I didn't, you know, as a little kid, yeah. I don't think anybody does. But um, as I grew older, I saw the need for the actual product, right? I became a product first. I was a client, got stuff, got my family covered, got all that stuff set up for my family. And then I said, hmm. I saw what the products could do for us, for our future, for our kids, the next generations. I said, all right, let me look into this deeper. You were my broker who actually gave me my first policy and you tried to recruit me. And I totally blew you off for about two years. It was, uh, it was a long time coming. And then I finally just got sick and tired of just working the rat race. And, you know, it was a rat race for me, man. I didn't want to go work for a guy I didn't even enjoy working for for nine hours a day and only get home when my kids are ready to eat dinner and go to bed. You, you know, know I, I remember that when we first met, like you were driving an hour, hour and a half to work, yeah. working for six, seven, eight hours a day, and then driving an hour, hour and a half back home. That was 10, 12 hours out of your day. And then by the time you got home, your energy was down. Yeah. You were tired. You were exhausted. And you got six kids. You got a set of twins, a set of triplets, man. Yeah. So I, I couldn't yeah. imagine her trembling that she had to be home. And that was big for me too. I wanted to be there for my kids. Laquan's got a bunch of kids. You got you got like 15, right, Jesse? I think something like that, 12, 15. Um, and so together we got 20, 20 something kids. I wanted to be there for my kids. And I and I said, man, I gotta do something where I can have time freedom 
to build up to financial freedom. So I got started eight months in, started making some good money, quit my job. And uh, we've been doing it ever since full time. But I think January of 2022, we dove in head first and just we've been grinding ever since. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you, one, I, I remember this conversation with you, Laquan, is one of the determining factors on uh, you choosing real estate over life insurance or choosing life insurance over real estate is because you wanted the time freedom. And it really stuck out to me is that uh, because you, you do have uh, four girls and you said, listen, I want more time freedom with my kids. I want to I be able to be with them and be that role model, be that mentor uh, in their life and, and build that that legacy that as a man, that's our responsibility. So uh, how, how has that been with you being time freedom, controlling your own hours, being your own boss? I'm unemployable. So when I got and, introduced uh, and from that, that was that was the game changer because it wasn't the money. I was already making six figures in the car business. No. So, and everybody goes to real estate as a side hustle. So I just joined the wave. And then I met you that day that went public with my, you know, real estate firm. And I don't believe in coincidences. So I dropped everything that day and, and partnered with the financial firm. Yeah. So let me ask you, you gentlemen, what was some of the things that you see in, in middle-class America today, man? What was some of the, the financial struggles you guys see? Uh, before we start, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Laquan, I can't post it because I'm Caucasian, unfortunately, but I saw a meme this morning, uh, uh, real this morning, and I shared it with you. Did, did you did you watch it? I was on, the, I was on an appointment earlier. I, didn't I, sh it. I shared it with you. It was talking about African-Americans. He said African-Americans in the United States spend $700 million per year on perfume and cologne. They spend $250 million per year on liquid soap. They spend over $170 million per year on hair. They said, so we looking good, we smelling good, but we still don't have no insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's a sad find, reality. And I was trying to find the statistics for, for, for Caucasian people. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's that's not, it doesn't matter what race you are. It's we're spending money we don't have on things that we really don't need. And that, that's all across the United States. It's all across the world, guys, because our education system didn't teach us how to be fiscally disciplined. And we see people, even though their income increases, they're not saving more. Their lifestyle is increasing. They start to live beyond their means. So what, gentlemen, uh, what do you see taking place in middle class America that could be somebody's downfall this year? Now, I'll tell you, I was at the mall the other day, and I, I've been there a couple times over the last couple of weeks. No matter what time I get there, the dang parking lot is absolutely packed and you yes. got to drive around for 30 minutes before you find a, find a spot. And it's like, this is a pretty big mall and it's always packed. And there's people drive, you know, there's people driving from 30, 40 minutes away to get to this mall. And I'm like, I'm asking myself if we're in such a horrible economy right now, why is everybody at the mall spending all their money? Why are they putting up, they're probably buying things on credit and, you know, delaying their payments. And we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot right now. Buy because now, they, pay later. They, buy now, pay later just came on the scene. Oh, what is it? Two years ago, three years yeah. ago, like really, like with the whole afterpay things. And those were only created to make more money for those big corporate companies because they they earn they charge interest, you know, and 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 they're re, they're relying on people missing their payments and then they charge fees, right? So it's kind of like the banking system, but a little more, uh, you know, a little more risky. Um, but a lot of people are spending money, you know, yeah. and it's not going to get any easier from here on out, at least for the next couple of years, especially with the, you know, people are dropping like flies in the, in the candidate race for presidency, you know, yeah. and uh, it's going to get very interesting over the next six to 12 months. Very well, interesting. Also think about all the, all the big corporate, um, corporate employers that are actually letting people go right now. Yeah. But like there's, there's tons of layoffs taking place right now. And we, we understand that the way it works is, because a, a CEO's primary responsibility is to keep the shareholders happy, right? So if they know they're about to have to project or, or uh, send in their quarterly reports and they already know they're going to project a loss, what do they do? They downsize, they cut these, these salaries, they use the salary to, to uh, show as profit. So they let people go and then they hire, hire them back and bring on a new crew later on the next quarter. Yeah, so we are pawns in the chess game. And uh, we don't control that income. Somebody else controls our livelihood. And as fathers, as men uh, that are protectors, that are providers, 
we, we have to make sure we have some stability in our family and stop listening to mainstream media because what mainstream media is telling us is not the truth, guys. Okay? Like, like they're telling us, Mark, to, to hit on your point, they're telling us everything's good. Everything is not good. I, I saw a thing yesterday. The, 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 here's what the great experts are saying, the economic experts. They're saying if Trump is voted into office, whether you like the man, love the man, hate the man, I don't, I don't care. This isn't a, a political talk. If Trump is voted into office, the stock market, uh, stock market, stock market can soar 40 to 50 percent. If uh, a Democrat is voted into office, it's going to drop 30, 40, 50 percent. And that's traditionally accurate, no matter who's in office, whether it you know is Republican right. or Democrat. That's the typical cycle that takes place. Correct. So what, what what I challenge everybody to do right now is take a look at your your investments, take a look at your finances, take a look at your your retirement, and say, okay, how much of this retirement do I not want to lose? And then find out what you can do to actually protect it, preserve it, and try to grow it at the same time. Many many people out there right now they're just looking to grow their income or grow their wealth. Guys, right now you need to focus on protecting the wealth that you have. Worry about growing it later on, but protect what you have because we saw it in 2008, we saw it in 2001, 2002, 2003. The, the dot com bubble, the stock market dropped 46% over three years. In 2008, 2009, the market dropped 58.67%. Guys, if you have all your money in a 401k plan with no, with no defensive measure in place to protect your money from market losses, guess what? Your 401k just became a 201k. Yep. And imagine if you would have retired that year. Instead of having a quarter million, now you got what? 125 in there. Now you got to rethink your retirement strategy. So what's, I just the average, what's, the average somebody has, what's the average somebody has in their retirement right now? Do you know the stats? Actually, I, I know the stats, but I, I'd rather show somebody so they can believe me. Yeah. Average... Balance of a 401k at 65. I'm just going to pull it up right here. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can share my screen. Present. Share screen. Now, right, here we go. If we look at this, guys. If you look at the average balance of a 401k, this is straight from bank rate, at 65, if you see it right here, it's seven, the, don't look at the average account balance. That, that could be one person with $2 million in there, and that could be one person with $30,000 in there, and 232 is the average. The median account balance is what, what that, the median person has, the majority of people have, so seventy thousand six hundred twenty dollars. Wow, that's crazy. At sixty-five years old, the average person has seventy thousand six hundred twenty dollars in here. That's and let, let me open up another one, and we're gonna say, what is the four percent rule? Hmm. Most people don't understand what the four percent rule. Okay, four percent rule. They don't teach this in our school system, guys. Okay, uh, where are we at? Four percent rule is easy to follow. Actually, we're not going to go through that. The four percent rule essentially, you can go to this article. It's a four can't, article. Can't, can't, can't see the article. Reshare. Uh, share this. There. Okay, there we go. Can you, you see, see the article now? Yeah. All right. So the four percent rule, guys, is it gives you a ninety percent probability that you're not going to run out of money too soon. So let's say you had a million dollars in your 401k balance, your nest egg. You cannot pull out more than 4% per year to ensure you don't run out of money too soon in retirement. Think about it. A million dollar nest egg, 4%, that's $40,000. And then you got to pay taxes on that because it was in a tax delayed product. If you have a million dollars in your 401 if you were able to save a million dollars, you probably had $150,000, $200,000 per year salary. Now you got to live on $40,000. That's not going to be the life that you dreamt of. And then uh, let's do the math on the 70,000, average balance of 70,000. Okay. Let's look at this. 70,000. So let me get this army calculator out. So 70,620 times 4%. That's $2,824 per year 
in retirement. If you divide that by 12, that's $235 per month. I don't know, Mark, but why? Can you live your best life on $235 per month? And we didn't even take taxes out of that, by the way. Yeah. All right, so let, let me stop sharing this. Well, guys, you know it's not 4% anymore, right? With, with rising taxes, with rising... It's lowered, it lowered recently, right? Uh, yeah. Inflation. It's not 4% anymore. It's 2.8%. Wow. So you cannot, if you want a 90% of probability that you're not going to run out of money too soon, you can only pull out 2.8%. You know, a million dollars. A million dollars isn't going to do nothing. No. A million dollars is, is minimum wage in today's economy. So, guys, there has to be some solution out there, but traditional financial advisors, they're helping them in the right way. Uh, our education system isn't educating us the right way, but when it comes to properly structured, engineered, and designed life insurance, obviously that's what we specialize in. We're teaching people how to protect their wealth, preserve their wealth, and grow their wealth tax-free and without any risk of market losses. Mm. So, Mark, can you explain the difference between compound interest and uninterrupted compound interest? Yeah. So, so uninterrupted compound interest is is exactly what the name says. It, it doesn't have any breaks. It, it is uninterrupted. It continues to earn interest upon interest upon interest. It's two types of interest. We have interest in like a four hundred one k. We have interest in like um, you know an IRA. We've put money in the stock market. There's interest. It can compound over time. But the moment that market drops, it's interrupted. And so that's interrupted compound interest. That's all your traditional variable up and down accounts. No. Uninterrupted is when you stick your money in an account and it, it, it is, it's a consistent curve going upwards. Even when the market drops, there's no break, which means the pattern doesn't dip and go down. And so there's only a few products in the world that gives you uninterrupted compound interest. And not a lot of people know about them. What are some of those places? Laquan, tell us. My favorite is the indexing strategy. Boom. That's that's it. What's what's the indexing strategy? Can can you explain that for everybody? Picture picture a stair step. So so your money is linked to an index. Let's use the S and P five hundred. All right, and then when the market goes up, the money in your account goes up. When the market <coughs> drops, you're sitting right there. You have a zero percent floor. That market goes back up again, so does your money. Market mm. drops, like I did last year, 20%. All of our clients, anybody who has their money in this indexing strategy, the money stays right there. They have a 0% floor, okay. the principal is protected. That, that, that makes perfect sense. It's just They don't teach that in, in, our, in our school system. They don't teach that in um, finance class but because that's not, that's not advantageous to the banks. Okay, Because we're taught to go to school, get a job. Work for 40 hours per week for 40 years for what? 40% retirement, right? So they're not teaching us that in our school system. I'm about to pull up a picture that I want to share with you guys. I, sh I shared it with you guys the other day uh, in our group. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, but ultimately what it's, do what it's doing is it's showing you the past 25-year uh, 20, 20, look back of what how the markets performed versus how the banks have performed versus uh, how the indexing strategy has performed, okay? just want to find it real quick. Is that the girl? You hear that? <laughs> That's my grandson in the background. <laughs> uh, Jake. He's, having a, he's having a good time. Oh, man, I need to get out of here. <laughs> Everybody's tied up. Uh, that's funny. That's why I shaved my beard because I was getting all gray hair. It was coming in full gray. I was like, heck no. I need to look younger. I shaved the whole thing off. That's it. Let's see. Just trying to find this, guys. Now, why are you doing that, Coach? Just it's, it's, to piggyback off what you're talking about as far as financial, if, if, if we're talking about like the African-American community, Coach, it's it's even worse because because of you know they're not taught these things and if you and if you look it up it says that you know black wealth is set to be at zero by 2053 
me reason being is because all right, I'm an '80s baby, so we're just we're we're still we know our, our parents were talking about it, our grandparents were talking about it, so we know about it, but not many of them us are are, are exercising what we've learned. Um, so I say it's a 50 50 chance. The next generation coming up, it's a microwave here, so they want things now, now, now. And then you look yeah. at look at look at the communities, all right. So if you look at the, the, the suburban areas, there's 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 like golf, there's like you know clubs, there's clubhouses, there's a, a probably a banks, um, you know they have to travel miles and miles to grocery stores, and it's a beautiful community. But if you go to like the the urban community, there's a there's a check cash in place, there's a Chinese yeah. restaurant, there's a family dollar, there's everything is instant. Everything's instant. So mm-hmm. when we get paid, we're instantly known to give it away. So the, the mindset of so if we come, so if, if I come to to a, a somebody in the community and you talk to them about this, the first thing you're gonna think about is a scam because they've never mm-hmm. heard of it, they've never been introduced to this. Yeah. Um and, and that's where it's 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 where we're at war. With the with the urban community, and that's why I like my goal is this to be. That's why I'm going to wear my hats. I'm going to wear my jewelry. I'm going to, but still speak knowledge and say, listen, I look like you, but there's other ways out of this. Because I don't see it. And then another thing, just the caveat, I keep hearing about. I did a lot of research recently, Coach. And you keep hearing about um, Black Wall Street. We have to okay. go back to Black Wall Street. Let's go back to Black Wall Street. It was an amazing time then. Then it got burned down. Tragic. But nobody talks about when they rebuilt it. Mm. They rebuilt it. Black Washington rebuilt it. It didn't last. Why? Because they want to know what Tom Dick and Harry was doing over That's there, right. and it didn't sustain. So before it money stayed in, people were talking about it, but then they started saying what they were doing over here, and it just went away again. So we have so my whole goal is it's, it's gonna build back up. Um, just the knowledge, but it starts with us. It starts with us, and and getting back into making it, making making money fun again. If that makes sense, it one thousand percent makes sense. Because think about this: money's not fun anymore because eighty percent of the fin- uh, the stress somebody carries with them is financial stress. Yeah, like they got more months than they got money, and. Um, they're, they're eating the, what ramen noodles and I can't even say tuna fish anymore because tuna fish is like four or five dollars a can. Uh, but but spam, ramen noodles, what, whatever it is, cheap. Um, um, if you can help find a solution for the money problems that middle class America is facing, you can help remove 20, 30, 40 percent of that financial stress. They're going to be better mothers, better fathers, better friends, better human beings. And Laquan, I truly believe that's how we change the world. It doesn't matter what your race is. I grew up in a trailer park in Georgia, and then we moved to South Carolina. I grew up in a trailer, guys. I hear all this white privilege stuff. Like, bro, I grew up in a trailer park, being made fun of because I had hold, bought all my clothes from freaking Goodwill and the Salvation Army. And that was my childhood, right? So everybody I grew up with, they're still in the same place doing the same exact thing. But God gave me a vision. God gave me a dream in my heart, and I decided to step into that vision, step into that dream. When See, our education system teaches us to think, feel, and act a certain way towards things they didn't teach us. They didn't teach us uh, entrepreneurship. They didn't teach us business ownership. They didn't teach us financial freedom. They told us to go to school, get a job, work for 40 hours per week for 40 years for 40% retirement. And let's let's say, uh, Laquan, let's say we go to a local elementary school. We go to a third grade classroom. And we ask all the little boys and little girls in there and say, what do you want to become when you grow up? What do you want to be? What are some of the things you think they're going to want to, uh, they're going to say? Police officer, the president. Police officer. The uh, why you say that? What's the average salary of a police officer in the United States? 65, 75,000? Mm-hmm. So something like that. So now, so they want to be a police officer. Now they're looking at the average salary, and now they start limiting their beliefs that that's all they're worth. So now somebody like you comes along and says, hey, I can show you how to make a quarter million dollars in the next 12 to 18 months. They're like, that's a scam. That's a Ponzi scheme. Because they told me police officers only worth 60000 My friends, anytime you have a job, somebody else is controlling your worth. You, my friends, are the only one who knows what your true worth is. I served 16 years in the military, and I gave it up because I was overworked. I was underpaid, 
and uh, two master's degrees, and I was still getting paid the same as the guy who showed up late, who didn't show up at all, who had no college education. I still got paid the same as them. It didn't sit well with me because I knew that I was meant for more in this life. Laquan, you were you were making six figures plus in the car industry, but you were working 17, 18, 19 hours a day. There was no life. So, so we say, is it really justifiable that I have this income, but I have no time? You were still trading time for dollars. And that, that's the problem in, in today's world is, hey, I got to make more money to offset these, this inflation, to offset these taxes, to offset the interest rates. But ultimately, what you're doing is you're just going to go get another job, trading more time for dollars. More of those dollars are going to taxes. And as a W-2 employee, look, 51% of all the money uh, a W-2 employee makes throughout their life goes to the government in taxes. You're literally working six months of the year for free. Correct. And what? Uh, How the hell does that make sense? Wasn't the first Bush that was an actor who worked, who, who was an actor, worked for like three months and then took the rest of the year off because of taxes? I, I know who you're talking. I know who you're talking about. It was uh, I can't remember the name. It wasn't, it wasn't like John Wayne or nobody like that. Um, I know who you were talking about though. Yeah. But I'm like, it's it's crazy. And then making six figures in the car business, you don't know what you don't know. I'm like, that's not my take home. So it's like you, yeah, I made six figures, but my take home was 30, 40 percent of that. And you and the pay taxes because they didn't tax you enough. And then you're probably maxed out your 401k. So your take home is not is like probably 50 percent of that month. Yeah. So we, we got a question here about Jeremiah. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say Cologne. Uh, the U.S. dollar is heavily inflated here. Let me just pop it up on the screen real quick. Okay. It says the U.S. dollar is heavily inflated. Do you agree? Now is the best time to invest in gold and silver and crypto that has real world use and some mean coins. Uh, okay. The U.S. The U.S. dollar, and this is just my opinion. Okay, it's, it's could be facts, but this is just my opinion, just based on my experience and, and knowledge. Uh, but the U.S. dollar hasn't been a currency since it was on the gold standard since Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. Correct. Cause every dollar used to have how much gold that it was worth. Right. Once Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard, then the government started, or I don't even want to say the government, but then the, the treasury, yep. 1971, you're 100% correct. They started printing dollars that devalues what it's actually worth. We're in $32 trillion worth of debt. The more money they print, the higher the inflation is going to go up because now you're losing purchasing power. For example, uh, during 20, when, when COVID happened 2020, around mid 2020, uh, 2021, the cost of gas was going up tremendously right here in Texas. And there was a guy on the other side of the gas, uh, the gas pump. He said, man, gas prices are getting so high. I said, did you ever think that the value of the dollar is getting less? It's not the gas is going up, it's that the dollar is worth less. So this is why we say don't put your money in the banks because if the bank's giving you 1%, if inflation is 4%, you're safely losing purchasing power every year you keep your money in the bank. That's where the rule of 72 works. Look, Juan, you want to tell them what the rule of 72 is? Yes. So you take your, your interest rate, um, you divide that by 72. That's how many years it will take for your money to double. So if you have $1,000 in your savings account, you have a 1% interest rate, divide that by 72, it will take you 72 years for that 1,000 to turn into 2,000. Damn, that's a lifetime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so we got people out here that we get some clients, so they're like, hey, uh, Laquan, Jesse, I got 100,000 just sitting in my bank for the past five years. I was like, that money's working for the banks. It's not working for you. So we want to teach you how to become your own bank and put your money to work for you. So let me, can, let me continue. Well, let, let me continue with Jeremiah's question first. Hold, hold, okay. hold that yeah. question. Um, invest in gold and silver. Always invest in gold and silver, guys. That's God's money. That's God's money, guys. They said they, they said invest in gold. Obviously, gold is not spendable because you can't carry around big chunks of gold, right? Silver is spendable, right? You always want to invest in God's money. It's the only thing that's been stable and consistently growing throughout its life. Okay. However, crypto, not, not sure if you know this, Jeremiah, if you follow me or follow the Juan, but I used to be known as King Crypto. So I used to be the CEO of a blockchain company. And I actually pulled out when, when Bitcoin went from 19,000 back down to 3,000, 
I actually left the crypto industry because I didn't want my reputation to be on the back of something I didn't even control, right? Because people were getting reverse mortgages and everything. Uh, Bitcoin is, is the king of crypto right now, but it's going to be an altcoin that outworks crypto. I am an accumulator. I believe blockchain technology is the future. Uh, I don't believe necessarily Bitcoin is the future, but I believe blockchain technology is the future. We've been, we've been in the digital space for so many years. If you look at your debit card, there's a little chip on it. You just tap it. That's digital. That's digital currency, guys. Okay. Whatever they do with this CD, CB, whatever, whatever they want to do, right? It doesn't matter. It's going to be digital. Okay. Um, crypto is still unregulated and decentralized. Therefore, it leaves too much room for scammers. Okay. I will not tell anybody to put their money in crypto until it has some sort of regulation on it. You can go buy like Ripple. Ripple has a little bit of regulation on there. I have tons of freaking Ripple. I bought uh, 800,000 and six tenths of a cent back in 2017 for like 150 bucks, right? So I, I'm a holder, guys, okay? Uh, but yeah, XRP and Ripple, yep, yeah, there you go. So make make sure you buy, if you're going to, if, if you must buy some crypto, make sure it has some sort of regulation on it. XRP, Jeremiah, is a, is a great example. They just finished a lawsuit. For the past eight years, nine years, they've been they've been uh, tested over 500 banking institutions, faster, faster transaction speeds, right? But crypto, or should I say, blockchain technology is the future. Start start buying and holding right now to prepare yourself. Eventually, it's going to be in your retirement plans. Eventually, it's going to be one of the indexes inside of life insurance. I'm a firm believer on that. So don't not do it. Just you got you got to be very careful. Like. Uh, there's over 50 fake accounts with my name on on social media and they message everybody trying to get them to send them crypto guys i will never ask you to send me any freaking crypto i'll never ask you to put money in, in forex or anything like that just know that i am 1000 percent dealing with life insurance and retirement plans not any cryptocurrency okay hopefully that answered your question uh jeremiah and what was your question like for me that was a, that, that's what i was referencing the crypto comment okay what, what was your question on um, what was it backed by? It's not backed by anything. Different altcoins. If you're gonna buy crypto, make sure make sure it is backed by something. Meaning, meaning that it has a significant use. There's there's cryptocurrencies popping up every single day, and many of them are meme coins. Like Jeremiah was mentioning meme coins, like your Doge coin. There's nothing back in Doge coin. It's just a meme coin. But if you can get a coin that, so for example, when I was the CEO of a blockchain company, um, we built a coin called Legal Coin. So this Legal Coin is something that if you ever dealt with lawyers and you needed to pay a lawyer, you could pay them with this this cryptocurrency called this altcoin called Legal Coin. Okay. And we had other other coins under our, our, our um, umbrella, like Pivx and stuff like that, that had other significant uses for it. Um, but yeah, most most cryptocurrencies that, that come in, they're fly by night. Uh, there, there's thousands of them. Less than 10% of them will ever be anything of significance. Yeah. So so like right now, he's talking about a meme coin. There's something called uh, Shiba, Shiba, Shiba Inu. There's trillions trillions of Shiba in you that's never going to be worth crap they're burning off they're burning off Shiba in you by the billions just to get it to two percent so we put fifteen hundred dollars in Shin, uh, Shiba in you so we're looking at 2027 20, 2030 for it to actually hit two two uh two cent if it hits two cent that'll be worth about 18 million the problem is is we gotta wait it's the waiting game we bought yeah. now we hope for next Ten years, and hopefully they burn off enough to limit the supply. So, and that's the other problem with Ripple, Jeremiah, is Ripple has a, has a ton of supply. Okay, it, it, it's it's an infinite supply. It's not finite like Bitcoin. Okay, because there's only a certain amount of Bitcoin ever going to be mined. Okay, but when it comes to Ripple, it's it's supply is so much more. It will never reach ten dollars per coin. It reached four dollars like three years ago, but it will never reach ten dollars. If it reaches ten dollars, it would have to do a thousand percent more than what Bitcoin's growth is, and that's—I don't see that in the next five, what three to five years, anything like that, guys. So buy and hold your crypto if you got to get into crypto. 
Um, but don't let the fear mongers scare you guys. Like uh, I see too many people on my post talking about what happens if there's a great reset, bro. We've been talking about that for 10, 15 years. Okay. If you have life insurance and they come out with this digital currency, all that's going to happen is there's going to be a switch instead of physical currency. It's going to switch. If you got a hundred thousand uh, physical currency, it's just going to switch to a hundred thousand digital currency. That's all the changes guys. Nothing. You're not going to lose any money. Okay. Yeah, uh, B BTC ETF. Yeah, this this is every four years Bitcoin halves. So this is a halving year. So hopefully you got some Bitcoin half. You're pretty much doubling everything. Okay, so that's what happens during the halving years. You pretty much double up everything. I can only hopefully. spell crypto. So what's that? I can only spell crypto. So yeah, K R Y P T. <laughs> That's it. Hey guys, let me let me ask you a serious question. For those of you that are still still here watching, many of you have seen my videos. You've seen Laquan's videos. You've seen Mark's videos. I don't know what happened to him, but um, hopefully he'll pop back on here in a little bit. Guys, I am a firm believer that if you are a man, if you are a woman, if you have breath in your lungs, you need life insurance. Let me know in the comments right now. When I mention the word life insurance, what does it make you think about? What do you think life insurance is used for? Be honest. And be, be honest, be honest. Or if you've watched our videos and you know what it's used for, what before you watched our videos, what did you think it was used for? And I'm here to tell you a properly structured, engineered, and designed life insurance policy can solve all of America's middle class problems, financial problems. I don't know if there's a delay or what, but, but nine out of 10 people ask that question to folks. They say, well, Jesse, it's to leave some money to my family when I pass away. Okay, L.H. Thompson, Generational Wealth. Felicia, well, dive a little bit deeper. Most people say it's to leave some wealth to my family when I pass away. So let me ask you a question. Laquan, when I mention the word car insurance, what does it make you think about? Your car. Yeah, think about it. When I mention car home. homeowner's insurance, what does that make you think about? A home. So why, when we mention life insurance, it makes people think about death? Life insurance is for the living, not for the dying. Let me say that again. Life insurance is for the living, not for the dying. Can you explain to them what living benefits are? Like what? Definitely. What are living benefits? Critical, chronic, and terminal illness. So we all know someone who was diagnosed with cancer before. We all know someone who who need to go enter into a group home or or need to live in aid. We all know someone who's had a heart attack, stroke. Um, you got a real bad sunburn at the beach, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So we all know that, but nobody knows that if they had a properly structured life insurance policy, they have access to that death benefit while they're alive today. So think about it, guys. Living benefits is critical, chronic, terminal illness, heart attacks, strokes, cancers, anything dealing with the internal major organs. Chronic illness is long-term care disability. If throughout your lifetime you're diagnosed with a critical chronic terminal illness, you can leverage your death benefit while you're still living. Let me say that again. You can leverage your death benefit while you're still alive. Pay off your medical bills, supplement your income. That way your family isn't succumb to any financial pressure. Guess what the number one cause for GoFundMe is, uh, Laquan? Uh, you already know, bro. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to role play. The number one cause for GoFundMe is unexpected medical bills. The number one cause for bankruptcy, unexpected medical bills. The number one cause for divorce is financial pressure. A properly structured life insurance that has living benefits solves all of those problems. But guess what? They don't teach us the power of life insurance while we're in school. That's the craziest thing. Guys, we leverage life insurance as a financial tool. Sure, it has a death benefit in there. That's a bonus if you do pass away, if you critically chronic trauma ill. But we leverage it to keep our money in motion for us, guys. Instead of putting money in the banks where your money's not working for you, we put our money in life insurance. That way it flows for us. Okay? So... Man, oh man, oh man. How many of you didn't know that? How many of you did not know that? Life insurance can be used while you're still living. 
you, you know, you know the 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 Laquan, right before I hopped on here, I made a post yesterday. Um, if you have a parent, because I, I helped the client with some final expense on their grandparents, mm -hmm. and they were currently they were they were currently paying like one hundred twenty four dollars per month, and I got them the same coverage, same twenty thousand death benefit coverage, final expense for sixty two dollars per month. So they're they're saving over over fifty percent of what they were actually paying before. Okay, most people are overpaying for final expense. So I just made a quick post. I said, listen, if you got a parent, if you got a grandparent, and you don't want to be stuck with an unexpected medical bill whenever they pass away, you need to get them a final expense policy. Okay, pay on it now. That way, it's there, and you don't have to put your family in any financial burden. So I just before we hopped on here today, I just ran all the quotes. I said, send me your name, send me your age, and whether you're male or female. And I want to send you a quote for final expense. Most people think life insurance is difficult. I would rather, let's say you got a 75 year old grandparent, mm -hmm. no life insurance, but you know they're going to pass away and the average funeral in America is $11,500. Would you rather them pass away with no insurance and you, the breadwinner of the family, everybody's going to come to the person that makes the most money to pay for the funeral, right? Would you rather have to come out of your, your savings? to pay 11,500 unexpectedly, or would you rather pay a hundred bucks per month? That way when it comes time, everything's taken care of. No stress. hundred bucks. Peace of mind, guys, peace of mind. LA Thompson said, I've heard that before, but how liquid is the money you invest in life insurance? It all depends. I'm talking about final expense right now. Uh, liquidity, let me ask you a question. What's your current retirement, LA Thompson, what's your current retirement plan? Where are you currently saving money for retirement? Let me know. And anybody else, if, if, if you want me to answer your question, what is your current retirement plan? Let me know in the chat group. Where are you saving money? 401k, IRA, a shoebox, bank account? Let me know. And if you're not saving money anywhere, which many people are never never taught to save money, uh, that's an even bigger problem. we got to have a discussion on that. Get you started. Getting started is the first step. Sean Rod, are you saving your retirement in XRP? You got a lot of trust, brother. <laughs> so while while they're typing in their answers, I remember. So my grandmother passed. We she didn't have a policy, so we had to. I had to cash off my four hundred one k. And everybody had to come together and chip in money for the for the funeral. And I remember taking the money out of my four hundred one k, and it was just a hassle just to get the money out. And then when I did, they sent me the check. I had to pay taxes on my own money. Yep, I had to pay taxes on my Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're frozen. It was a hassle getting the money out, right? Yes, and then when I got it, I had to pay taxes again because they added that to my end of year yep. income. So I paid taxes on that again, just- Double taxation. All right, so check this out. Some people say real estate investments, uh, 401k, pension, T-bills, um, brokerage accounts, teacher retirement system. Uh, you, you must be in Texas, TRS. My wife was a high school educator. She had a TRS. Um, so here's the cool thing. I'll talk about teachers real quick. Teachers are already overworked and underpaid. Teachers are already far underpaid. And then it's mandatory that you save into the TRS system. Okay, whatever state you're in, you, you got a different name for it, TRS, FRS, stuff like that. Think about the substitute teachers at your at your place of employment right now. Oh, you're in Georgia. Cool. I'm originally from Savannah, Georgia. So uh, teachers, the substitute teachers, most of them are retired teachers, but their retirement isn't enough to live on. So they got to go back and be substitute teachers making 120 bucks per day. Think about that. It's not even enough to live on. Your 401ks, do you control that? You know your 401k is a tax code, right, guys? 401k or 401 section K of the Internal Revenue Code. Yeah, the is beautiful. 401 section K of the Internal Revenue Code. It says you can put your money into that financial vehicle. You don't have to pay taxes on the $500 today, but you're going to pay taxes on the $500,000 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Now, do you guys feel taxes are going up or going down in the future? Let me know. Do you feel taxes are going up or going down in the future? If you said they're going up, I'm in 100% agreement with you. We're in $32 trillion worth of debt, and there's only one of two ways to get rid of the national debt. You take budget cuts or increase taxes. 
Our government does not like taking budget cuts. So what are they going to do? They're going to increase the taxes. We see it every single year, right? So with that being said, if we honestly feel taxes are going up, does it really make sense to continue putting money into a financial product where we're going to have to pay taxes, higher taxes in the future? I don't know. It may, but I don't know. You got to get with your financial advisor on that. They're going to tell you to max it out, right? <clears throat> I'm going to show you some other stuff here too. Let's talk about real estate. Real estate is solid. Real estate always goes up. It goes down, but it's variable, right? So when you go to liquidate an investment, a real estate investment, is it guaranteed to be up or could it potentially be down? There's only one home of money that is liquid, that's safe and secure, it's asset and probate protected. It gives you a great rate of return as it, you experience the highs of the market without the lows and it's tax-free. There's only one financial vehicle that does that. And that's life insurance. money. We leverage tax codes. Write this down, guys. First tax code that we leverage is Internal Revenue Code, so write out IRC 72E. It says you can put your money inside of life insurance tax-free. Section 7702 says you can access that money income tax-free. And Section 101-A says upon you passing away, you can transfer all that money to your beneficiaries income tax-free. See, the problem in middle-class America, we've only been taught the last tax code. Leave money to your family when you pass away. But the wealthy is taught the, the additional two tax codes. I'm about to open your eyes up. Stay here with me, guys. Okay? I'm about to show you something. I'm the technical guy here. So I like to um, I like to challenge the status quo. And I like to find out, hey, wh why are the wealthy getting wealthier and poor middle class getting poor? So check this out. Terrell Smith, 72E, 7702, and 101A. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And what you're going to be looking at is you're going to be looking at the top 100 banking institutions by asset size. If you look at this, see Bank of America has 24, 24 billion dollars worth of cash value life insurance. Wells Fargo, $18 billion worth of cash value life insurance. JP Morgan Chase, $12 billion worth of life insurance. The money we stick in the bank, within microseconds, they take 50% and they loan it out in the form of credit cards, auto loans, and mortgages. They're charging 27 to 40% interest and paying us 1%. The banks play the spread game. It's called positive arbitrage. They make 27%, pay us 1%. They profit 26% on our money. The other 50% of our money, they take it and put it in something called tier one assets where they're making another 6 to 10% interest. That tier one assets is cash value life insurance, my friends. So instead of you putting your money in the bank, why don't you put your money where the bank puts their money? Life insurance. See, they didn't teach you that. They taught you to put your money in the bank. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper, guys. Um, I told you guys I was a technical guy here. So we're going to go to the Security and Exchange Commission website. I like to see what these big billion dollar companies are paying their C-suite executives, not their average employee, not the janitor or the secretary. I want to know what are they paying the C-suite, the CEO, the CFO, the COO. OK, so here's what we're going to do. OK, don't get pissed off at me. I'm, I'm just the, the bearer of news. OK, it can be good news for you. It can be bad news for you. OK, and hopefully you guys are finding value and you actually share this out to get this information out of people. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we'll be in Facebook jail. But that's all right. That's all right. Uh, when I share my screen, what you're going to be looking at, guys, you're going to be looking at the financial statement, the proxy report for General Electric. How many people know who General Electric is? General Electric is a multi-billion dollar company that sells what? Appliances. You probably got a, a, a vac, uh, not vacuum cleaner, but uh, a stove, maybe a, a washer and dryer, uh, maybe a refrigerator, General Electric. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and we're going to see what they're paying their C-suite executives. I'm going to highlight on the left-hand side, you're going to see Emlyn. Emlyn is their CEO. Bornstein is their chief financial officer. Comstock, chief operations officer. Joyce, Rice, and Shireen, the, some of their board members. Now, check this out. General Electric, inside of these C-suite executives, life insurance, cash value life insurance policies, $445,000 per year, $92,000 per year, $134,000 per year, a couple hundred thousand. You, you get the gist. That's interesting, but what's even more interesting is look at what they're putting inside their 401k, $9,275. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So they're telling us to max out our 401ks, but they're not. 
they're maxing out the life insurance and only putting the match into the 401ks. How many of you have ever heard that the match is free money? It's free money, Jesse. It's free money. I got to put money into it. It's not freaking free, guys. Somebody's got to pay the taxes on it. So check this out. Every dollar this company puts inside of this that matches you inside your, your 401k, that company takes a dollar for dollar tax deduction that tax year. What they're doing is they're shifting the income tax liability away from them and onto you. You're going to have to pay taxes on that money. That's a win for the company, a loss for you. And every dollar this employer puts inside this C-suite executive's life insurance policy is also tax deductible. But better yet, it's tax free to the C-suite executive because it's life insurance leveraging the tax code. It's tax free. It's not term life insurance. It's not whole life insurance. It's something called universal life insurance. So anybody who hates on life insurance as a financial tool, tell them to get the hell out of here, guys. Susie Orman, poor people listen to. Dave Ramsey, middle class American listens to. If you want to, you want to become wealthy, you got to start doing what the wealthy are freaking doing, guys. Leverage life insurance as a financial tool. Okay. So that being said, can you guys still hear me? I'm still here. Turn red. He's about to start turning I'm, red. I'm trying not to turn. I'm trying not to turn red. I'm trying not to turn red. I don't see anybody coming in the chat, so maybe they went to sleep or something. But I hope they understand what I just showed them. Financial, advi financial advisors won't even show you that because it takes money out of their commissions. But I'm going to show that to you because as a human being, you deserve to win. You deserve to thrive in life and you deserve to become financially free. But it starts with proper knowledge, proper education. So I commend each and every one of you for hopping on here today. I don't know what, you, what else you could have been doing, but you're here. Hopefully you're taking notes because what we just shared with you can completely change your life if you're willing to implement those strategies. I appreciate that, uh, Sean Rogers. I'm about to call you Mr. Rogers, right? <laughs> Mr. Rogers, Sean Rogers. I appreciate you guys, right? Because people, even though they get the information, if they don't implement the information, they're, they're still going to be broke, right? And I can't tell you how many people that say, you know what, Jesse? I'm interested in life insurance. I'm interested in IUL or cash value accumulation, but I want to think about it. And then next thing you know, three months goes goes away or goes down the line. They get down. Well, they come to me. Hey, I just got diagnosed with cancer. Can I still get? Nah, it's too late, bro. Oh, the stock market just dropped ten percent. Oh, it's too late, bro. You shouldn't have got started when you were eight days old. That's the soonest you can get life insurance. I have seven life insurance policies on myself. All seven of my kids have two life insurance policies. My wife has a couple. We love freaking life insurance. You got your life insurance policies right there in the corner. You can show them. We're not just talking about it, guys. We're not we're not selling you, we're not knocking on your door trying to get you to buy eighteen hundred dollar vacuum cleaner. There you go. That, that's his life insurance policies for him and his girls. I'm telling you guys, this is stuff we do. We live it, we breathe it. Okay. Completely changed our freaking life. And when the stock market drops, since we have liquidity inside of our life insurance, we have access to our money. We're going shopping as soon as that, that market drops and these homes won't sell pennies on the dollar. I'm gonna, I might become your landlord, guys, but that's all right. That's the topic for another day. So with that being said, it's uh, 53 minutes here. Uh, let me know what what what's some of the value that you found in today's meeting, guys. What's some, what's some of your takeaways from today's meeting? <clears throat> we got about three minutes left. If you have a question, please please feel free to ask the question. And make sure you're sharing this thing out, guys. I got a question over here. Yeah, so you you know, I got an MBA as well. So check this out. Even with the MBA, they still didn't teach us personal finance. They taught us corporate finance. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just crazy what they teach us in school. So what's your question, Laquan? So do you recommend still getting a 401k through your job? The only time I, I would recommend getting a 401k with, with your job is if you're borderline tax brackets, okay? Because that's the one thing um, 401k has going for you is let's say you're at 124,000 and you're right there at the next tax bracket going from 23% oh, to 25%. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. And you need a stick. Three thousand or five thousand dollars into the four hundred one k tax deferred because it's not counted as, as ordinary income. You're not going to pay tax on that until later. 
So if you need to, if you're at that threshold, then yes, put some money into a, a 401k, a traditional 401k, not a Roth. If you put it in a Roth, you're still going to have to pay those taxes. Uh, LA stops. Uh, who's, who's, whoever's profile you're watching this from, just shoot them a DM, a direct message, and they'll get to you. And set up a, what we do is we educate our clients first. So any of you that are interested in getting a free strategy session, we never charge our clients anything, guys. If you want to learn a little bit more about compound interest, tax-free retirement, and different alternative strategies, just reach out to us. Uh, whatever, whatever profile you're following from, just um, DM us, direct messages. We'll probably get your phone number, give you a call, see what you're looking to solve for. We'll hop on a 30-minute strategy session with you. And if uh, we'll educate you first and foremost. And if what we have can help you solve what you're looking to solve and it makes sense for you, then we can move forward. If not, hey, at least you leave one more knowledge in the game with it. Okay? So I appreciate you guys. Uh, Laquan, any last words before we hop off? No, oh, please share this this live out. We're gonna be doing this more periodically. Um, just giving our knowledge. And also, if you if you there's a if there's a topic you want us to cover, shoot me a message or shoot Jesse a message, and we'll definitely cover it. Yeah, definitely. Uh Gab, Gabby Hill said does age matter uh, over 60. Age doesn't matter, just know the older you are, uh, you're probably playing catch up, so you'll probably have to save more. The way we, we determine life insurance is our goal is not to take any additional money out of your pocket. Our goal is to find out where you're currently saving money and taking a portion of that and reallocating it to a better product. Okay. And then you can overfund it as you want, put extra money into there as you want. Okay. So for example, if you're putting $600 per month inside of a 401k, I'm going to say, okay, how much of that money do you not want to lose? I don't want to lose $350 of it. We will reallocate $350 towards a properly structured life insurance policy, creating new two streams of income. Hopefully that helps you guys. Okay. But with that being said, um, I appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out of your out, out of your day. I think today's Tuesday. Today Tuesday. Yep. Out, out of your Tuesday to come and get uh, more knowledge, more know-how uh, to go out there and, and impact your financial freedom. With that being said, good night. God bless. Go out there and crush 2024, my friends. I look forward to having a conversation with each and every one of you.